Hi, this is Lance Culver, and this is going to be a Typhlo Beginners tutorial. In this video, I'll be making a repel effect. This was going to be included at the end of a video I did on particle groups because the setup is very similar, but it would have made that video pretty long, so I decided to record it separately. If you haven't had a chance to watch that video, you can click the link in the upper right hand corner of the video player, or you can check the description after this video for a link. Go ahead and get started and create a sphere just off the grid here and I'm going to move it up until it's just sitting above the ground. And then I will come over to Helpers, click on this drop down, go down to Tie Flow and create a tie icon. Lift it up also just a little bit. And next I'm going to create Tie Flow. Alright, for this I'm going to use a Birth Objects operator and pick the sphere. And I'll shut the original off. And then we'll use a Spin operator. And I'll change the spin axis to world space. And I'll reduce the Z value to zero. And because of the way this is laid out here, it's gonna to want it to roll across the scene this way. So that's on the Y axis. Increase that to a value of one. And I'll decrease the interpolation value to 0.8. And increase the spin rate to 350. And change the timing to continuous. Okay, next I will add a physics shape. Next, I'm going to add a spawn operator in here above the physic shape. And as you can see, that created a new particle. But if I create a copy of this display, drag it into a new event, and connect that to the spawn, now it's hidden here inside. And I'm just going to change that color. So, what the spawn operator does is it creates children. In this case, right now, it's just created the one, but copies of the original particle. So, this red particle is the child of this yellow particle. So I can drop a position icon into this event here and pick the tie icon. And now it's going to reposition that. So if I come back into the spawn and increase the offspring to something like 400. So then I'll have a bunch of particles spread around the whole icon. And again, by default, it just creates copies of the parent particle. But that can be changed with a shape operator. I'm going to select 3D and change it to stones. And I'll scale those up to maybe 300% and drop in a physics shape. Okay, so now to continue, I'm going to use a particle groups and drop it into this first event. I'm going to go ahead and rename this sphere and I'll rename this one stones. For the particle groups in the sphere event, I'm going to drop that beneath the spawn operator, place this on groups one and two. And you can see the sphere just fell through the floor and that's because I placed it on a group and they're not enabled in the Typhlo main settings. Come down under the physics rollout and enable groups one and two. I can also drop the particle groups in the stones event and place these on group two. So I place the sphere on groups one and two so that if it happens to make contact with one of the rocks, it will actually collide with it instead of passing through it. Once particles are set on a group, they will only interact with particles they share a group with. So I can drop a property test in the stones event. I'm gonna change the test type to neighbors. Test true if there's a greater number than zero neighbors on group one. Uh, this property test is going to search for neighbors, which is just other particles that are within a 10 centimeter radius, but only if they're on group one. So in this scene, the only particle here that's on group one is this sphere. So if this sphere comes within 10 centimeters of one of these particles, they're gonna be sent to the next event because they'll test true. Connect that to the property test. I'm going to rename this repel. Grab a speed operator, drop it into this event, increase the magnitude to 2.25, and change the direction to outwards from parent. Decrease the interpolation to 0.8. Okay, if I let the animation play. So to correct this problem with them colliding, I can come into the physics shape operator under dynamics and reduce the friction. The dynamic friction is gonna be the one that affects this the most. I'm going to reduce that to 0 0.001. But I'm also going to go ahead and reduce the static friction to 0 0.001 as well. And these particles are continuing to slide away because the speed operator is set to continuous. So what I can do 
is drop a set target operator into this repel event and change the target to parent and now select the speed operator enable filters click add change the property type to target distance so if it's less than 15 and change the channel to target so this filter now is setting up a condition where the speed operator will only affect the particles if they're less than 15 centimeters from the sphere. Well, that's going to do it for this one. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. If there was any part of it that you're having problems with, feel free to leave a comment. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Hope you have a great day. Take care. Thanks again. See ya.